Good morning. Hopefully you can see and hear us okay. We return to Draw Along Live. It's been a long time. I think we've had four weeks off because of the Easter break. Um, and I've missed it. I don't know about you guys. So I'm quite keen to get started once again on our new term where we are visiting South Africa in the next few weeks and starting with this fabulous drawing of a giraffe. I say drawing, it's a photo of a giraffe. We're going to turn it into a drawing. Hi Susie, um, I'm hoping that you can hear me okay. I've just put a new microphone in and I was worried that it's not actually connected. So <laughs> um, if you can hear nothing, I'm hoping someone will let me know. Oh, oh brilliant, we've got our regulars coming in and I think we might have some new faces today as well. So welcome, welcome. Um, I'm going to quickly as well talk about how we've slightly changed the draw along to make it even better for you guys. So um, much the same, most things are happening exactly the same. So we're working from a reference image which you um, can access digi digitally from the event. Um, Michael's with me still as well. We're going to be sharing facts on the animals. Um, but we've added, if people want to, some additional worksheets for you to extend or embed your learning a bit. So um, there's three different versions of this sheet available on our website. If you go to our courses, you'll find it. But also this is available as a document on the um, actual event discussion board as well. So if you haven't found these yet, they're in two places. If you need help finding them, let us know. But basically, you could use all three of them. You could use one of them. The idea is the information that we're going to be sharing you in our facts that Michael helps me read out um, will give you the answers you need to be able to fill these in. So we've got a more a, a simplistic fact file version. There's one that asks you to, um, questions that you could write in either note form or full sentences. And then there's one that's completely open for perhaps some more extended writing if people wanted to um, extend their learning even further. So just to let you know, those are there. And we've written them all or created them all for all of the draw along this term. So if you wanted to get super organized, you could even print them out for a whole term. So um, Tyrone, we're South African. Oh, awesome. Have you have have you been in South Africa recently? Have you seen any of these animals? I'd love to know your um, your experiences. I've never been, but I would love to go. So the format is we're going to draw um, from our reference image, and then I'm using watercolor pencils to shade and color it. You can use whatever mediums you like. You can completely change the drawing if you want, because the fun thing about art is that there are no rules, and you can do it however you want to. It's all about enjoying the process and having fun with it. And then from 1 o'clock today until 3 o'clock, if you would like to, we invite you to upload your photos of your work so far. Um, there'll be a special post that goes on, so look out for that at 1 o'clock, and then I will write you some feedback. Now, you don't have to have completed your picture by that point. You can get feedback from the point you're at. And actually, that act that might actually benefit some people more because I will give you feedback telling you what you've done really well, but also give you a suggestion on how you can develop and improve your picture, which might be quite useful to get halfway through drawing it if you haven't finished as well. So that's, that's enough of me rambling on, isn't it? Let's actually get, get on with some drawing, shall we? So I'm just using a standard HB pencil. Um, to draw my outline. Excuse me, I've been in the I've been in the wars. I've, we went on a lovely peaceful walk yesterday, and our big dog pulled me over. <laughs> so I've injured my finger. So it'll be interesting to see how I can draw today. But we'll give it a good shot. So I'm going to work on my page landscape wise because I think that works better for this illustration. And I'm going over to the right mostly with the head because I want to get some of that long, famous neck in as well. Hi, we're watching the straw along in the car going to North Wales from being in Bud. Oh, I had fun in Wales. That's, I like that. I like that you're taking us with you on your journey. Um, so first, giraffe facts. Giraffes, I think most of us will know this, are the tallest mammals on Earth. Their legs alone are taller than many humans, about six foot long. So just their legs without the additional body and neck is six foot long. They are incredible creatures, aren't they? I'm going to be sharing some more little snippets of information as I draw, but I'm really keen to get started because, like I say, I've missed this. This is the best part of our week, I think, getting started on draw along. So I am just roughly sketching, so really lightly with a pencil so that when I inevitably make mistakes and need to use a rubber, I'm not making it too difficult for myself. And I'm not worrying too much on the details right now because I can go back and add that in. It is just about getting the rough shapes on the page to begin with. So I started with one ear, and I'm moving around the skull. 
to get the different features in. I quite like this photo. I thought I picked this photo because I just thought it looked quite funny and cute. The way he's peering at the photographer. And like I say, we can, we because there's no rules, we can adapt things and, and change them if we want to, if we think it's going to make a better piece of artwork. So in this photo, although, although I like the composition of it, you can't really see much of the eyes. And I think it's really important to be able to add the details in the eyes. So I've got, looked up more reference images of giraffe eyes so that I can draw them in and they're not too dark and in shadow. Um, and giraffe eyes are, they have round pupils and then they've got brown eyes. So that's what I'm going to adapt to my drawing to make it a nicer picture for myself. Because if I just wanted a copy of this picture, I could just print it out. So, that's not a bad start for, for four weeks off and being out of practice. Hi from Holly, just having trouble connecting but trying to watch Giraffe, one of Holly's favourite animals, and she's been so excited to draw this one. Yes, I think giraffes are a popular creature, aren't they? Welcome, welcome. Hello from Weymouth, nice. <laughs> Jay, I can't even find a normal pencil. You know, that is normally the thing we battle with the most, isn't it, Michael? Try and find just a standard drawing pencil before we start on a Monday. Got all the colours in the world, but can I find a drawing pencil when I need it? It's like needing a biro when you need one. I can't draw the giraffe. Are you struggling today? Is it because you start at the same point as me? Do you want to tr maybe try to start with the neck if you think it might make it easier? I just, I just can't. <laughs> it's because we're out. We need to warm up a bit, don't we? We're out of practice. Four weeks is a long time to down tools. I just need to do something easier. Or if you're really struggling, try and find a different reference picture. Um, <laughs> if you have a spare device, <laughs> which you don't. <laughs> So I can see lots of inaccuracies on my picture, but that's okay. <laughs> We're not going for perfection. We're going for a nice illustration. So what I've done wrong here, when you look at my picture, it's like I've missed a whole bit of his skull. So I need to I need to change that. Jay, so I'm a bit behind. Don't worry about it. Um, most people tend to catch up and overtake me anyway. And you don't have to finish the same time as me either. It would be pretty impressive if everybody started and finished at exactly the same time. Well, I mean, what would the big chances of that be? I'm struggling with this bit a bit. I don't know why. My brain's not not warmed up yet. That's a bit better. I'm just trying to draw a bird. Oh, you're drawing off of the wallpaper behind me. Well, this is it. You're, you're still being productive. You don't fancy drawing the draft. You're something different. I've always, I've always not. I always, I've never been able to draw giraffes. I think it's become a mental block for you. So you've told yourself that you can't draw giraffes. Okay, that's not too bad. Bit of a skinny neck, but it's a, it's recognisable as a giraffe, isn't it? <laughs> Still haven't started, I haven't even started yet. See, it's fine. We're all just. Here you chilling, aren't we, on a Monday morning? Let's go for a couple more facts then. So their patches tell them apart. We see this a lot in the animal kingdom, like zebra as well. So no two giraffes have the same pattern. Their patchwork coats also vary depending on their species. So there are different subspecies of giraffes, which I'll talk about in a, bit, in a little bit. The Maasai giraffe is darker with brown lines between its patches whereas the reticulated giraffe has brown to orange patches separated by thick white lines, which could be what we're drawing here when you look at the colours on the image. Um, the patches of the northern and the southern giraffes are more like splodges of paint. So, yeah, different variations in terms of their patterns, but they, their patterns are almost like fingerprints in that no two giraffes will have the same, exactly the same. Now I'm draw like I say, the image doesn't show it, so I'm going to draw in my pupils. Big, they've got big round pupils, and um, what was it we drew recently? Oh, the panda has slit-like pupils, like a cat, and they had giraffes do not have that. They have the the more common round pupils, and they've got these gorgeous long eyelashes as well. 
So I'll make sure I put that in as a feature. And now I'm just going to go back and sort of refine some of the details a bit because I've, I've roughly sketched. So I just want to make sure I've got the lines in fairly accurately before I start adding colour and tone to my page. How are we doing for time? Not too bad. I think what we're trying to do today, what I'm going to really try and focus on is showing that really defined skull structure. You can see on his face, you can see lots of lumps and bumps. And I kind of want to emphasize that with my tone when I come to shading. Oh, my finger's so sore, so <laughs> I might have to take more regular breaks because that's hurting. Cool. I don't think that's too bad a start. And then I put some details on the ears. If I get time, I'm going to go try and add in that blue background because I think it really makes it, the image pop. But you don't have to use blue, you could change it to your favourite colour or the colour of your bedroom so that when you if you want to put it up on your wall like Michael does with a lot of his artwork. Although I noticed you've migrated to the ceiling with your artwork, Michael. Mm. <laughs> Run out of wall space so now it's going up on the ceiling. And then I try and rub out some of these rough, rougher lines as I go along, just so I don't get too confused with what I've drawn. Cool, cool. I think I'm ready to start adding colour, but before that I'm going to read some more facts out for you guys. Mine looks pretty clumsy and kind of bad. No, you've only just started, Jay. Don't, don't beat yourself up just yet. <laughs> it's a work in progress and it's going to look better. And that plain piece of paper you started with. Naomi, don't have a rubber. Oh, you're making it even trickier for yourself, aren't you? I, that Again, that's normally something I struggle. I normally have a nice putty rubber, um, and I couldn't find it this morning. So we've, we've got a standard rubber today. So another couple of facts for you. So I mentioned that there are subspecies of giraffe. So we, we have the species of giraffe, and within that it's broken down into nine different subspecies. So they are called the reticulated or samurai sum, giraffe. My pronunciation is shocking, I apologise. The Kordofan giraffe, the Nubian giraffe, the South African or Cape giraffe, the Angolian or Smoky giraffe, the West African or Nigerian giraffe, the Rhodesian or Thornycroft giraffe, the Rothschild or Ugandan giraffe, and the Maasai or Kilimanjaro giraffe. So most of them seem to have two different names, just to confuse the seed even more, but ultimately nine subspecies. Sorry, Abby, so you're on um, Mum's Facebook. Um, I'll try and remember to call you Abby, but I can't promise anything because I forget my own children's names sometimes. <laughs> I normally go through, I'm like, Elliot, Michael, Mako, oh. <laughs> stop changing your name. My mum used to do it to me, that's only fair. Right, so I'm going to start with the eye. Um, and I often say this, try and make sure you keep a nice, bright, white highlight in the pupil because that helps to add a bit of life to the image. And I'm just placing colour down. I'm not worrying too much about the really fine details because I'm using watercolour pencil, so I'm going to be going over it with a paintbrush as well. So this isn't the finished result as such at this stage. And then a nice dark brown. Well, actually, what I might do... Should I? Shouldn't I? I might go with a lighter brown and then put some darker brown details in. 
like if you was to look at anybody's eye, they're not a solid colour, are they? You can see other lines in amongst them. So I'm going to try and do that entirely from imagination. Ooh. I'll start with a lighter brown and then I'll go over with a darker brown trying to create a little bit more pattern and interest. Looking good. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting you're drawing something completely different today. I'm sorry if the legs are too long. different there isn't it <clears throat> and then they've got really thick almost like they've got really thick eyeliner on especially below their eye so I'm going to make sure I use the black again to draw that in and again I'm leaving a little white stripe as like a highlight to make it look more realistic And this other eye, in the picture, it's really in shadow, so I really am um, having to use my imagination to fill the gaps. Cool. And now I'm going to go to the ears. Oh, okay, another one. So Farron. So it's not Danine, it's your mum on Facebook. I would go on my mum's account if you're at Art Sessions. It's a good idea. Michael's not on Facebook, she's too young. Mm -hmm. Not missing anything anyway, mm -hmm. other than us. I don't know what I've ever wanted. No. Oh, I said I was going to start with the ears and I've just started shading. What am I doing? I picked up the brown to do so. Right, go back to the ears. But I get easily distracted, that's what happens. <laughs> so I'm going to start with a little brown. And I'll probably add some black on that to make it darker. Remember to leave the white space for the furry bit, little fur, furry tufty bits you can see under the ears as well. I'll go over to the other side. And the reason I tend to, if I've picked a colour and I, and I need to use it for more than one thing, so like, for example, the eyes, the ears, where you know it's going to be the same colour on both sides. The reason I do them but at the time is because if I put that pencil down, I've got several shades of brown, and there's a good chance I'll pick the wrong one up again when I go to do the upper ear. So I find it best to do it this way. So just add a bit of black, add a bit more tone, and some of the shadow in that you can see there as well. And then I'm going to a light grey for the rest of the years. Time for another sack. The Maasai giraffe is distinguished by jagged and irregular spots in its body. Its geographic range includes various parts of eastern Africa. It's the largest bodied giraffe species, making it the tallest land animal on earth. So we know that giraffes are the tallest land mammal, um, but the Maasai giraffe of them all is the tallest. This fact I quite like, and I think it's quite appropriate. <laughs> A group of giraffes is called a tower, which when you consider what they look like as individual giraffes, I think it's quite fitting. I wonder if that was not coincidental when they decided to call the group of giraffes a tower of giraffes. They could have called them a skyscraper, couldn't they? You next to the eraser, mister. No, it's here. Ah, uh, you did. You hid it from me. 
Yeah, so we've only got one between us. So I try to be quite defined with my tone. And when I talk about tone, basically we're talking about the difference between lighter and darker colour. So not necessarily different colours. So you can use a grey, like I am here, and you can build it up in layers to have a, a darker grey, or you can have it lighter. So that is a difference in tone. And that difference in tone, and you being able to have that variation, is often what will help make your picture look more realistic rather than cartoony is a skill that you develop over time. It's just practicing, like most things really. Another fact for you. A baby giraffe is called a calf, a male giraffe is called a bull, and a female giraffe is called a cow. So just like our domestic cows, that's the terminology we use for the whole family of giraffes. The mums, the females, are usually pregnant for around 14 months. It can vary, I think it's 13 to 16 months. They're pregnant for quite a long time. So you consider when a, a human has a baby, they're pregnant for nine months generally. So it takes a lot longer to grow a bigger animal, clearly. But when the calf is born, they have a really rough start to their lives. The mum giraffe obviously gives birth standing up, because gravity helps. Um, and so the baby giraffe falls about two metres to the ground when it's born. So definitely uh, doesn't have the nicest start to life. Yeah. But they are born six foot tall, so as, like, as, as tall as a tall, tall man. Yeah. <laughs> but that's how big that, that's how big they are already when they're born. How are we all getting on so far? Good. Yeah, he may not join a draft today, Michael. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you're enjoying the art, and that's the main thing. I've got in a sort of reddish, sandy colour, because I can see that in the fur of the giraffe. Right, I will blend a few different colours to get the right kind of tone and colour. I will put that lighter shade in again as well. All kind of experimentation and testing it out as you go along. Especially with mixing colours. I've used three different browns just on this one horn, which I will talk about. I know I have a fact on the horn. I want to make sure I got it. Their horns are actually knobs covered in skin, with skin and hair above the eyes that protect the head from injury. That so they're not horns in the traditional sense, like when we think of like a rhino horn. Well, their rhino horn is made of hair as well. Um, but yeah, they're just little nubs on their head, effectively. And this I thought was an interesting fact. They, their neck contains the same amount of vertebrae as we do. So the bones in their neck, they have the same number as we do. It's just that theirs are much, much longer, obviously. <laughs> you would have thought that they had more, but no. I'll bring in some more black, I think, again. Oops, not that much black. So 
again if you're new to our draw alongs you I don't know if you're not, you've probably heard me say this a million times, but the general ratio of how long, how much time you should spend looking at your own picture compared to your reference image, the one you're copying from, is 80% to 20%. So 80% of the time, you should be looking at your reference image and 20% of the time, your own page. Because our brains can sort of, not play tricks on us, but we can think that we know what something should look like and then we we do that, but actually, is our brains filling in the gaps and not necessarily being accurate? So if you are keen to sort of develop a more realistic drawing style, then that is a one up top tip I can give you. Make sure you look at your reference image more than your own page. Keep flicking back between them. I feel like I need to get a wriggle on. I've been chatting too much. So you guys don't have to rush to keep up. You don't have to finish when I finish, but I always aim to finish before we go offline. So we know that a baby giraffe is born to about six foot tall. A female giraffe can grow to around 15 foot tall, and a male giraffe can grow to around 18 foot tall. So if you imagine, that's probably just shy of three doorways stacked one on top of the other. I haven't had the, the luck or pleasure of seeing one in the wild, but I we've seen one in the wildlife park down the road from us. They've got three there at the moment, and they might have... Mm. The lifespan of a giraffe is about 25 years in the natural habitat, so it can be up to 25 years. I think the average is about 15, um, and they live about for between 20 and 27 years when they're held in captivity. Which is not vastly different, really, because normally when they're held in captivity, animals have um, a lot longer lifespans, but is because ultimately, whilst they do have predators, and I'll talk about that in a bit, giraffes do have predators, because of their sheer size, they're not quite as vulnerable as, say, for example, a gazelle or a zebra. So they don't have, not as many of them are um, necessarily taken out by other predators, shall we say. They're normally predators when they go to the ankles, don't they? Well, yeah, the thing is, with a big giraffe, a bit like a horse, you, you know, we know not to walk behind horses because no. of their ability to kick out. Well, imagine what damage a, a giraffe kick could do. <laughs> <laughs> There's some big old legs to come swinging at you, aren't they? Knock out on me. <laughs> You'd only kick if it, if it feels in danger. Yeah, if it felt threatened. Yeah, absolutely. Just they're they're not generally ferocious animals, I wouldn't no. have said. <laughs> but if you're like a threat, if a, if a predator's biting them, I think they've got a kick. I think they'd fight back, wouldn't they? If they could. You would just stand there, take it. I mean, if a predator won, they'd have quite a big food source, I guess. Well, yeah, that's a big old animal to take down, but not without risk, I would have thought. No, they would have to have food. Yeah. So, while giraffes aren't necessarily threatened with extinction today, then they may be in the coming years if poaching and habitat loss continue. So, we, although they do have natural predators, unfortunately, once again, us good old humans 
are also a main threat to them in terms of poaching, so hunting them for different parts of their body, um, and also because we are taking the habitat, so they've got nowhere to live or to eat from, you know, reducing their food sources. So those giraffes as a species aren't considered endangered, some giraffe subspecies are. Um, the reticulated, reticulated giraffe and the Maasai giraffe are classified as endangered. And the Kodafan giraffe and the Nubian giraffe are critically endangered. So some of the subspecies are endangered or critically, some of them aren't. So they, although we wouldn't class the whole species of giraffe as endangered or critically endangered, it's definitely working towards that way. So their numbers have dropped by 30% over the last 30 years. Um, so obviously, if that trend continued, then it would not be good for the giraffe as a species. It's not going well. What with your drawing? What? Keep going with it. Don't give up. Going really I'm going really slowly today, and I need to get a wriggle on. Right. I'm gonna, you're going to see me start speed shading now. I'm okay. You're right. You're in the now, are you? No, because I was focusing on the details and I've got to actually put the paintbrush to them yet as well. It's not just a drawing, it's not just coloured, it's painted as well. I like to challenge myself. I might have to get you to start reading out some of the facts then, Michael, so I don't get getting distracted. Are you still doing your work? Speed shading. I feel like I need some sort of motivational music or something to <laughs> to, to colour to. Uh, Bean and Bud, I've, I've asked if they can see yours, Michael. Okay. Now, I don't, know if you, don't know if you missed it, Bean and Bud. He's gone completely on a tangent. He gave up with the giraffe, but he didn't want to give up the art, which is good. That's the main thing. Okay. So he's been drawing from details of the wallpaper behind me. <laughs> so um, he's going for it. I think it's a Japanese crane, actually, isn't it? Yeah, I think they're Japanese cranes. <laughs> Lovely colourful image, Michael. Well done. <laughs> I like that you didn't just give up. It's easy to do when you get like that. I'm not going to sit an hour, I'm just, I'm not going to sit here for an hour doing nothing. That's true. Boring, it? it inspires you to create artwork, so that is the main thing. That's what's important. I'm not going to give up like that. My belly's going. This is the problem with doing a live before midday. <laughs> My belly starts telling me what time is coming up. Okay, we're getting there now. Cooking on gas now. Caught up a little bit. Another fact for you. Now giraffe swing their long necks and butt 
heads to see who is stronger. We've seen the ones in, um, in the wildlife park doing that, haven't we? Mm. And the sound they make is pretty impressive um, where they hit each other. It's known as, the process is known as necking, and most giraffes don't get hurt doing it. Eventually, one male will give up and just walk away, probably to go and eat something. <laughs> so um, a, lot, a lot of male species, uh, not species, a lot of male creatures in, in the wildlife kingdom can fight almost to the death and or to the death and end up with severe injury. Generally speaking, male giraffes won't do that. It can happen. And I know I've seen that on a, on a documentary where a male giraffe had his neck broken as a result of it. But they're not trying to do that. They're just, um, generally speaking, it's a case of who's stronger. And the other one will walk away when they're done. even yet got a giraffe patch drawn yet so that's a big part I need to make sure I have time to do get some of his patches on his neck although I think even without that just looking at the face it is instantly recognizable as a giraffe isn't it because of those big ears and those horns and those big round eyes And the patches are starting to come in on the face. They're slightly lighter. And then they get darker. So I am trying to follow the same patterns on this image, but if that's too complicated, you can just make up the patches. But try not to keep them too uniform. So you want them to to look different. They're not the same shape and the same colour. They have got variation. When you're drawing your patches, if you want to sort of free rein it and not follow the image so much, that's fine. But my tip would be try to make them all quite different from one another and not too square and blocky because again this is our brain tricks so we can think we know what it looks like when you look at the patterns and the and the shapes of the patches they're quite different and organic oh my hands getting achy you can tell I'm out of practice I feel like I'm going to overrun today. I've still got to do the background. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to have time for my background. I need to make sure I read out the rest of these facts for everyone. Oh. I'm going to do the work tonight. Go for it because I'm not there yet. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. I can feel it coming. You know when you can feel it coming. <laughs> you're like, when is it, when is it gonna go? And then it just catches your guard. Yeah, oh, it's not gonna go now. And then it goes, and you're like, oh. Some darker brown in there.
eating lions. <laughs> they primarily eat the leaves and twigs of acacia, mimosa and wild apricot trees. Um, their long tongue, tongues are around 45 centimetres long. So I can't even show you on screen. So that, where my hands are, that's about 30 centimetres. So that's plus half more again. They've got really long tongues and their fleshy lips help them to strip the leaves from the branches. The tongue allows the draft to reach leaves on thorny branches without scratching his face or eyes. Can you imagine if you've got a thorn in your eye, that's going to be quite bad and you wouldn't be able to see dangers and predators. Mm. Uh, the tongue is not pink, it is dark blue. Uh, giraffes stick their tongues out so much when they're grazing that a pink tongue would get sunburnt, so the darker colours and pigmentation, are, pigmentation offer better protection in the harsh African sun. It's pretty cool, so it's not just by accident that they've got a blue tongue. By design, so that they don't get sunburnt tongue. Because I imagine that would be horrible. If you've ever had a standard house sunburn, imagine it being on your tongue. I would not fancy that. Trying to draw some of those wrinkles in his skin. And we've got to get some of this awesome little mane he's got going on as well. Oh, I am rushing. What watercolour paper do you use? I get asked this every time. I can never remember. It's called, oh, I can see it somewhere. It's called a Nucasso paper. I'll just grab it for you so you can see what it looks like. This is the pad I use. It's not, it's not overly cheap. You only get 30 sheets, but they are really nice quality and um, quite thick paper. And I think I get it from Amazon. Yeah. Nowhere to specialist. But you probably find it in other art shops, to be fair. I just find once I've added the water, if I haven't used um, watercolour paper, it wrinkles up and doesn't look very nice as a result. So thick watercolour paper. It's obviously more absorbent. I'm done, I think. You're done? Mm. Wicked, because I need your help in reading out some of these facts so that I can get caught up, because I am no, far I from finished. Hmm? Oh, yeah, you've not signed it. So anyone that, yeah, anyone that's new, your artwork isn't finished until you've put your artist signature on it. So make sure you do that right at the end. Um, I'd like to have some time to just put a couple more darker tones in before I start adding the, the water, just because I'd like to, again, build up that sort of structure and make it look really 3D. Are you we're getting ready to read up some more facts, Michael? Yeah, I don't know what we're on <laughs> Not left actually, because there you are from giraffe drink water. Nice and clear. <laughs> <laughs> giraffe drink water when it is available, but they don't need to drink water on a daily basis, which allows them to survive in, survive in areas with scarce water. That's cool. So they drink loads of it when they do have access to it. A bit like camels. Yeah, a bit like camels, which you could probably see a lot of similarities, really. I don't know why, but that, <laughs> I feel like they could be linked. Um, so yeah, they can obviously su store and survive on little water or having gaps in between accessing water. That's cool. What else, Michael? Uh, where do giraffes live? They they have adapted to a variety ha of habitats and can be found in desert landscapes, to woodland and to savanna savanna environments south south of the Sahara. 
Mm -hmm. Wherever trees are caught, are killed. So anywhere where there's trees and it's yeah. caught. Um, predators, humans, lions, leopards, hyenas. That flow down, Michael. Say that again. What are there predators? predators? Humans, lions, leopards. The leopards aren't in them. It depends where, because they live in a variety oh, yeah. of habitats, don't they? Hyenas and crocodiles. Well, yeah, even crocodiles. And humans. And yeah, of course, humans, because. What does it say about that one? Oh, it just says predators, humans, lions, leopards. Okay. Just like that. Giraffe tails are highly prized by oh, <laughs> prized by many African cultures and are used in good luck bracelets. What? No. Why so it's their towels that are poached off, make them, you know, know desirable with a poached animal. I don't animal. want to wear a towel in my arm. Fly with and even thread for sewing or string, stringing bees. The world's large, tallest land animal has lost 40% of its population in just 30 years. Ah, it's just 40%. So the other one said 30%. Hmm. And recent reports show poaching and wildlife tra traffic trafficking yep. are com com contributing to this decline. Decline. Oh, yeah. No, I can't read. Um, they are able to protect themselves from predators by staying groups, as it makes it more challenging for the predator. If they need to defend themselves, giraffes have a deadly karate-style kit. Giraffes can also run very fast, up around 35 miles per hour. Cool. <laughs> Like, that's pretty impressive. That's like um, as fast as like one of those little petrol go karts go. I've got comments. Sorry, I was just reading and listening at the same time. Jay, mine's not going on my bedroom wall. Uh, where did you keep yours? In a little portfolio, in a sketchbook. Mm -hmm. Um, I've been copying a different picture this whole time. Oh, cool! I look forward to seeing what what you copied from. And have you just drawn the head, or have you managed to get the giraffe's body in as well? Those pencils work, work really well. These ones, I like these pencils. That, or are you talking watercolour pencils in general? Uh, I have left myself very little time to do the watercolour aspect. This is because we're out of practice. And uh, I was chatting away. So let's see if I can claw back this time and finish this really quickly I without ruining the picture. Yeah. Who needs wallpaper need when you've got your own artwork? Yeah. <laughs> I need some yeah, you can sort that. She painted it on Amazon. <laughs> it's not good enough. Oh, don't wait. Do not beat yourself up over things because they, you know, practice makes perfect. And if you hadn't done anything today in terms of drawing, then you definitely wouldn't have got better. So trust the process. Next time will be better. And the other thing I say to people as well, don't throw away any artwork. If you, I know sometimes you can be disappointed at it and think, oh, I've done some on draw alongs and I've gone, I've actually come off and gone, well, that looks rubbish. What was I doing? <laughs> so I, we all get like that. But what's really good to try and do is keep hold of all your artwork because if you next time you just randomly draw a giraffe, it's nice to compare back and look at how far your artwork has progressed. So. That's my recommendation. Even the ones that you think, oh, I really don't like that and I never want to look at it again, put it away and then next time you draw a similar animal, compare them because you'll be impressed by how much you've developed your skills over the time. We have to always leave a bit early because we have another Zoom. No worries. Bye. <laughs> See you later. Um, oh, God, 10 minutes. Right. Come on, Pip, you can do this. Spend all that time putting those fine details in and then rush, rush, rush to get the paint on. Mm. Well, not the paint, the water. <laughs> the paint on. The paint all the on the pencil. Like, oh, yeah, no, so if you're using watercolour pencils for the first time, um, try not to overload your paintbrush with water because it's very hard to then control the movement of the colour on your page. So that's why you keep hearing me putting the paintbrush back in the water because I'm just using a bit at a time so that I don't drown my picture. I'm not sure if a picture can drown, but you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, typically it can. <laughs> if you put it underwater and stay there, it should turn into much more. I think. Mm. Oh, I'm going to 
Green paper is made out of water. You do use mm. water to make paper. You do, yeah. No, it's not water mm. isn't made like paper, it's just made out of water. It's like you have to use water for paper. Which is weird because I guess that in the one I drew a few days ago. See, there you go. Straight away you can see your artwork progressing. And that's the main thing. And we are our harshest, harshest critics because you're probably going, oh, this is a rubbish picture or whatever. I guarantee you somebody else would say, oh, that's amazing. So we are, because we work on our own artwork and in our mind, we can see what we want it to look like. And it's very difficult to get it exactly the same as what it is in your mind. Then it's very easy for you to sort of look at it and go, oh, that's no good. But actually, it probably is. The other thing I say to do as well, or to not do, is not to compare your artwork to other people. That can be really disheartening. You know, I've been painting and drawing for a long, long time, so don't compare to me. And everyone has their own style, and everyone does things slightly differently, which is good. It's another good, positive thing about art. There's no one right answer. It's not like a maths equation. And in this house, maths is our least favourite subject. Um, where basically, generally speaking, there's only ever going to be one correct answer. Art isn't like that. It is entirely your journey and your process. So, if you've enjoyed this and you're going to join us next week, what are we doing next week? I can't remember. Mm, I think never mind. Might be a meerkat. Yes, I think meerkat. It's a meerkat next week, which is our, my youngest, Elliot's favourite animal. No, it's a orangutan. No. Oh, wait, oh, wait. Okay, sorry. We're drawing a meerkat. Elliot's favourite animal is an orangutan, followed by a meerkat. Um, so don't forget as well, if you're finished, or even if you're not, if you'd like some feedback, where I write, I normally try and write at least one comment on something I think you've done really well, and then a suggestion for how you can develop and improve your artwork. At one o'clock, there'll be a post going up on the main page. So if you don't already, make sure you follow the main page so you don't miss that notification. Um, like I say, we've I know we've we've had to move the timings. I didn't actually I don't know explains why. So you we used to do this in the evening the feedback posts, but we had some feedback that lots of people were sort of forgetting to do it because it clashed with dinner time and stuff. But also I was finding it was a very long day um, going back online till 9 p.m. So we've moved it to between 1 and 3 p.m. today. You don't have to you don't have to collect feedback there if you want it as an as an additional offering for free um yeah and then we do the same again next week and for the rest of the term all different animals if you all the events have already been created so you can join them now so you receive reminders and you can see the different animals that we're going to be studying i would also be keen to know if anyone is using the worksheets we created um it'd be nice to know if they're useful for you and so we know whether or not to carry on doing them each term but I think we will be. Michael's going to be filling in. Mm. And then, um, yeah, and like I say, all of those have been created for the whole term, so you can print them off in advance if you want to. So, yeah. Am I going to do it? Yeah, I think I'm just about going to do it. I, I've impressed myself here. You have seven minutes. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I love a cliffhanger. We need some, like, dramatic build-up music, like a, like a timeline, time, time of ticking down. Yeah, but then that make you yeah, that would put more pressure on me. Can we do a guinea pig after? We've done a guinea pig. I have a feeling it might be on our YouTube channel. So we did domestic animals in one term. So this term is all South Africa. Next term is South America. But I'm pretty sure our guinea pig tutorial may be up on our YouTube channel. So if, again, if you haven't seen that, we've got loads of free tutorials on there. So if you just look for Technology Triumphs on YouTube, you should be able to find all our, or at least the vast majority of our tutorials. Some of them went missing off of Facebook, unfortunately, but the vast majority of them are, are on there. So it's worth having a look. Cause we've been doing these sessions for a year and a half now. We've had a lot of animals that we've worked our way through. We've got a cat as well. We've done a cat, we've done a dog. So yeah, so we did domestic animals, goldfish, horse. We did that turn, didn't we? Do you remember, Michael? I think the very first one we did with a fox. fox, yeah. We did like British wildlife, so we were looking at like a robin, a fox. Did we do a rabbit or something? I've got my fox 
Yeah, I've got them all. I've kept them all. They're, they're around somewhere. Who knows where? It's probably in my book somewhere. That old book, maybe. Got three different art books now. So yeah, we will continue to to give these free offerings. We have got more in the pipeline. More free sessions um, are being planned to create a bigger timetable of things on technology. It's technology triumphs that you can access for free. We also got our Creativity for Mental Wellbeing course that's completely free to anyone that wants it. If anyone wants the links for that, let us know. Um, if you've enjoyed this and you've got a facilitator or an adult listening at all, um, like I said, we don't ask for payment on anything like this and we we won't. We wanted to give it for free. Plus, because we quite enjoy sitting there on a Monday morning, don't we, Michael? Yeah. <laughs> Doing the artwork. Um, but if you wanted to help us into helping other people, we would love it if you could leave us a review on Facebook. I don't normally ask that. I always feel embarrassed about asking, but <laughs> it's there, isn't it? It's an easy thing to do. I like leaving reviews for people. Have I got enough? Yeah, oh God, I have rushed this last bit, Five but minutes. managed to get it done just about. Oh, thank you, Joe. Joe's uploaded the link for the guinea pig. So if you wanted the guinea pig tutorial, well done. I was worried it was one of the ones that Facebook just disappeared. But it's there. Cool. So just the main to do and then some final touches. Jay, a five star review. Thank you. It's not Jay, is it? I've forgotten your name already. It's not Amy. What was it? Oh, I do apologise. See, my memory's not that good. I wouldn't want to look back from the video, old videos that I do. Why is that? It would just make me cringe. <laughs> Abby, that's it. Oh, I knew, oh, I knew it began with an A. That's pretty good for me. I'm a, again, I've impressed myself today. <laughs> Wendy, you're really good at drawing. Oh, thank you. I don't tend to do it in a formal way. Like, I don't follow the way that a, an art teacher would necessarily teach you how to draw. I just do it what in a way that feels right and what is enjoyable and then um, that's what all about that's why i don't give you really strict like this is how you draw it and then you do this shape and then you it's more let's just have a go and enjoy it that's what it should be about i think anyway i've got a drawing somewhere that i did really good it's just some sort of like milkshake i don't know why but i just did really good at it you was in the right zone when I was you... just, it was really weird so i was like oh really good at drawing milkshake. Did your pip. <laughs> is that because i remembered your name abby <laughs> Thank you. I'll take that pat on the back. I needed it. <laughs> okay, I think I pulled it out of the bag just about <laughs> in, between, in, in between chatting and uh, reading out some facts and getting back into the swing of things. There are some adjustments I'd make if I had more time, and I'd probably add a few more darker tones. But actually, for four weeks off, that's not that's not bad, is it? It's a bit angry. It, no, he doesn't. <laughs> My, my giraffe looks angry. No, no, he looks no, curious. He's peering. He's <laughs> so don't forget to sign and date. And that's the final touch. So yeah, I look forward to seeing what you guys have created. Um, one o'clock this afternoon, around about then, there'll be a picture of this illustration. So you're looking for a picture of my drawing that I've done today. And then if you just comment with your artwork, I will be on after I've eaten something for lunch because <laughs> my stomach is telling me I need to do that. Um, and I will give you some feedback and I look forward to seeing that and hopefully to have you join us next week when we draw the meerkat and learn about the meerkat as well. Yeah. So bye bye and bye Abby, not Jay, bye everyone. Bye everybody. Um, thanks for joining us and making our Monday and the rest of and the beginning of our week so enjoyable. See you later. Bye.